Hello friends, so today in this video we actually gonna discuss the problem from lead code problem name where will the ball fall so it's a medium level problem I will first let you understand the problem statement it actually states that you are having a like a 2d grid okay and each grid has some sort of panel okay as you can see the panel can be like this it can be uh, going from the top like top left to the right bottom or like uh, top uh, like right to the left bottom so it can be like this now at each position like each column you will throw a ball now if there is a way the ball will go and slide down to some particular column but maybe it cannot go maybe it can like uh, like get stuck at some position so you just have to tell that whether each ball like reaches to the particular column if it reaches down what is the particular column it will reach if it cannot reach down like you just have to print out minus one so as you can see for this as you can see the first ball uh, will go to the uh, first column as you can see column one else no one reaches down so the answer is minus one for all the all of them now uh, the first thing uh, you can simply observe is uh, so let's assume that if there is some, some particular uh, position let's assume that the ball is at this position now any ball which comes to this position will eventually lead down to this column so it means that if you store out for every position what is the uh, for every position what is the column it can reach so any ball if it reaches that position will reach to that so uh, it means that you can use some sort of dp you can uh, store for every position what is the final column it will reach or it will not reach any any position so it can be minus one so as you can see the number is also 100 uh, like like column and uh, like uh, rows so you can also make a memorization table for that so now how you can approach this problem now as you can see if for any like we just talk about some general case if for say like as you can see for this block if the block is having a diagonal like this and the next block that's just adjacent to this is also a diagonal like this then the ball if if it is dropped in this position then it will go to this diagonal block so if this is like r comma c this is like a row x comma y block and the x comma y block is having this type of diagonal and the next adjacent uh, diagonal is also like this then if a ball is dropped here it will reach here I hope you get the point and uh, the, the reverse is also possible so if uh, some diagonal position is like this and the, another is like this so the ball will go in this position so from this x comma y it will go to this column uh, which is like the row is changed so x is increased and the y is minus 1 and in this x is increased and y is plus 1 so you just like you can uh, take every ball and then try to drop it up along the path like what is the path it will reach and also try to store out for every uh, position if another ball land down to this position what is the uh, like the path it will reach okay so that's the simple problem i will show you so it's just required dfs uh, some sort of dfs because a recursive function to start the ball from one position and what is the path it will take and maybe some another ball will take that path and then what is the uh, like final solution for that so i'll show the code part now uh, uh, as you can see in this problem uh, because the constraints are very small you can do this for every ball like uh, you can just take out for every ball individually find out at which column it will take uh, no need to uh, use a dp table because the constraints are small but uh, to increase the speed you can use uh, dp because as you can see you can observe that uh, for if uh, you know the position that for this block if the ball lands at this position uh, what is the particular column because uh, it will always lead down to the same answer so you can also uh, use that so what we'll do we'll first find out the grid positions uh, n comma n we just make it global so that we can find because we have to make that we have to also make a is valid function because in most of the uh, grid problems you have to check that uh, because if you are on some position we have to check that uh, like if for some addition positions we have to check that whether we can go to that we have to check check that it should be inbound so we have to always make a like is valid function so uh, then we make a dp table so as you can see uh, generally we initialize dp table with minus one but because in this minus one can also be answered which means that if uh, if a ball is at this position it will not reach any position so minus one for all the positions like if any ball come to this position the answer is obviously minus one so we have to also store minus one that so that's why we make a dp table uh, because the dp is uh, we have initialized this dp table we initialize it with, with minus two or you can store it with any negative number apart from minus one okay i just use minus two whatever you can use and then this is the answer vector to start all the answers then for every ball we call this ok function okay so this ok function will return out the position or the column at which that particular ball will land 
now what we'll send in this okay function we'll send the grid because we have to iterate over the grid we'll we will send out the the row the particular row on which we are and currently we are on the zeroth row and the i means that or at which column we are okay and then we just return out this answer answer vector now this is the is valid function we just return out object that whether this x comma y if we send that if it is in, in like invalid or like if it is is valid so how we can check that x should be inbound which is like it should be greater than equal to zero and it should be less than n obviously and for y it is greater than zero and less than n so this is the like if all the conditions hit true then the, then that coordinate is valid and then we'll just return out that yes that's valid then how this okay function will uh, work we just find out the base condition the base condition is when we just go out of bound which means that the ball fall and just go out of bound so it will happen that when r is equal to n uh, then like because we just start from first row second row and third row when my number of like rows exceed the, like this box which is like equal to n then we just return out at which column we are because column is storing that else at whenever uh, grid point we are which is r comma c what we'll check that if we are some intermediate row if we are let's assume that if you want to check that for this particular row if it is valid or not we will check that whether this particular uh, this particular what we can say this particular grid point is valid or not if it is valid then we will go and check that okay if this particular grid pattern like grid position is valid then we will check that okay if this is having one so uh, this type of diagonal is represented by one and the another type of diagonal is represented by minus one so if this is minus one and the next column position which is like this adjacent cell which is like if this is r comma c this is r c plus one so we just have to check that whether that exists or not if that exists and that is also one we just have to check that all of the conditions are true then we just check that okay now both of them are in this format so the ball will go to r plus one c plus one r plus one means that to the next diagonal like this position so we will check that whether we have found out the answer for that how we can check that if the dp table of that particular coordinate is minus two then we haven't found out because we have initialized with minus two but if it is not minus two it means that we have found out the answer for that and we can use that so we can just return out that else if we haven't found out we will store that answer and we'll call that that recursive function again for this coordinate okay then we'll do the same thing for minus one positions like if this position is minus one and the uh, if this is minus one and the left side of that is also minus one and it is in like it is valid then we'll check that if it is found out then okay then and it is not final that we will just return out minus one okay and then for any of this case if it doesn't hit the answer is minus one okay so that's the code for this problem i hope you understand the logic and the code if you still have any doubts you can mention it on as soon as one till then keep coding and bye